Hello and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you or me, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. Ron is not with us today. And I'm Jean Marie. Collectively, we're the host of Podcast DX. On today's show, we're Jean and I are just going to be talking between ourselves, and we're talking about Group B Streptococcus or GBS, Golf Bravo Sierra. It's a type of a bacteria, is that right? Yep, and according to the World Health Organization, approximately 150,000 preventable stillbirths and infant deaths um, are are, um, caused by Group B Streptococcus each year, and that's a whole lot. That's worldwide though? Yeah, that is worldwide. Um, and GBS can be uh, can actually cause pneumonia or blood infections in newborn babies, and this happens when the baby passes um, through the vagina during birth. And full term babies whose mothers have GBS um, in their in their vaginal canal have a one in two hundred chance of getting um, sick from GBS during the first few days after birth. And then women who have GBS in their um, in their vagina can also get an infection in their uterus during labor or after birth. So it's a risk to the mother and the child. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention classify cases of newborn GBS infection as either early onset, which means less than seven days old, or late onset, which is a newborn between seven and 90 days old. Newborn babies with group B strep usually have signs in the first 24 hours after birth. These signs may include being fussy, you know, crabby, irritable. Every baby. Yeah. Very sleepy. Again, every baby. (laughs) And having breathing problems, signs of sepsis. Okay, that's, yeah, that's not typical. Uh, If they're breathing fast and making grunting noises. Again, every baby. No. It's a specific kind. Okay. Yeah. That would be maybe a sign of pneumonia. Oh, okay. Uh, Having breathing problems and periods of not breathing, signs of meningitis, and having a change in blood pressure. How would you know that on a baby? You don't take your blood pressure. The the medical staff is going to be monitoring the baby's heart rate and everything else. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. But the mothers don't do that. No, the mother's not going to take the baby's <laughs> blood pressure. Uh, or if they have convulsions or a seizure. Mm-hmm. Babies who get group B strep a week or so after birth may have signs such as decreased movements of an arm or leg, pain with movement of an arm or leg, breathing problems, fever, a red area on the face or other part of the body. Pregnant women may have group B strep without symptoms. And when they have symptoms, the symptoms may include having to urinate often, having the urge to go often, or pain when urinating, like when you have a urinary tract infection. Right. Fever, nausea and vomiting, pain in your side or your back, your uterus or belly is sore. Isn't it every woman after birth? I know. Okay. And a fast <laughs> and a fast heart rate. Okay. So it sounds like you really hard to tell because the symptoms are so similar to being health, pregnant. Right, healthcare providers. Uh, GBS infections can lead to, as you had mentioned earlier, meningitis, pneumonia, or sepsis. Meningitis is more common in a baby who gets G- a GBS infection a week or several months after birth. I wonder if that's what Kim had. I wonder if that's why. How Kim, old was she? She was like uh, a month and a half, maybe. Because she got meningitis, and we yeah. had no idea where she got it from. Right, and they didn't check you for, I don't know Not if it was. I know of. And didn't give you a vaccination. Okay. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. see, mm-hmm. listening audience, this goes to show you it's true. <laughs> when we refer to strep bacteria called group B streptococcus, group B strep, or GBS, they commonly live in people's gastrointestinal and genital tracts. The gastrointestinal tract is the part of the body that digests food and includes the stomach and the intestines. The genital tract is the part of the body involved in reproduction and it includes the vagina in women. 
Most of the time, the bacteria are, fa- are not harmful and do not make people sick or have any symptoms. Sometimes the bacteria in- invade the body and can cause certain infections, which are known as GBS disease. And GBS bacteria can cause many types of infections, um, bacteremia or a bloodstream infection, sepsis, um, this is the body's extreme response to an infection, bone or joint infections, uh, meningitis, as we had mentioned earlier, which is an infection of the tissue covering the brain and spinal cord, pneumonia, which is a lung infection, um, skin and tissue, and skin and soft tissue infections as well. And GBS most commonly causes bacteria, oh, well, just to reiterate, uh, bacteremia, sepsis, pneumonia, and meningitis in newborns. And then it is very uncommon for GBS to cause uh, meningitis in adults. Okay. Well, GBS disease (coughs) is most common in newborns. There are factors that can increase a pregnant woman's risk of having a baby who will develop GBS disease, including testing positive for GBS bacteria late in pregnancy. And we're referring to the mother here. Correct. Okay. Uh, Developing a fever during labor. Okay. Having 18 hours or more pass between when their water breaks and when their baby is born. Okay. And in adults, most cases of GBS disease are among those who have had other medical conditions. Other medical conditions that put Adults at an increased risk include diabetes, heart disease, congestive heart failure, cancer or history of cancer, and obesity. Risk for serious GBS disease increases as people get older. Adults 65 years or older are at an increased rate risk compared to adults younger than 65 years. And the bacteria, um, it doesn't spread through food, water, anything that people might have come in contact with. Um, So how people get these bacteria or spread them to others is generally unknown. However, experts know that pregnant women can pass the bacteria to their babies during delivery. And most babies who get GBS disease in the first week of life or early onset, as uh, Lita had said earlier, are exposed to the bacteria this way. Babies um, who develop GBS disease from the first week through the first uh, 90 days or three months of life and have um, late onset disease, it can be hard to find out, like to um, determine exactly how they uh, the bacteria transferred to them oh, okay. or if it just took longer to develop. I guess that's a current unknown. And if you're in the medical um world, then you might want to research that. The bacteria may have come from the mother during birth or from another source. So at the present time, that's, I guess, unknown. Other people that live with someone who has uh, GBS bacteria, including their children, may be at risk or are not usually at risk of getting sick because you're not going to transfer it from an adult to a child or a child to an adult. Okay. All right. Well, that's, I guess that's one good thing. Mm-hmm. Symptoms of GBS disease can seem like other health problems in newborns and babies. Symptoms include a fever, difficulty feeding. Yeah, every baby. Yeah. Irritability or lethargy, limpness or hard to wake up the baby, difficulty breathing, a bluish color to the skin. Babies who get it in the first week of life or the early onset, (coughs) excuse me, Uh, Most newborns with early onset have symptoms on the day of birth. Okay. So when you're still with your doula or um, whoever is helping you with with the delivery or in the hospital. They can kind of watch you. Mm -hmm. In contrast, babies who develop the disease later can appear healthy at first and at birth, but during their uh, first week of life, you know, they might end up changing and Mm -hmm getting sick. Okay. Excuse me again. Mm -hmm. Women who give birth to a baby who develop GBS disease usually do not feel sick or have any symptoms. Okay. And then, um, and symptoms might vary based on what what part of your body is infected. So we're going to talk about some specific areas. So symptoms of bacteremia or bloodstream infection and sepsis, the body's, again, extreme response to the infection may include fever, chills, and um, general lethargy. And then symptoms of pneumonia may include fever, chills, 
a cough and a rapid breathing or difficulty breathing and chest pain. Um, if you have uh, the bacterial infection in your skin or soft tissue, it may appear as a bump or an infected area on the skin that's red, swollen, or painful, warm to the touch, um, full of pus or other draining material. And people with skin infections may also have a fever. Um, and if it's in the bone or joint, um, this area appears often infected and might also include, you might have uh, fever, chills, swelling, or, and, and or stiffness and the inability to use the affected limb or joint. Okay. Well, if doctors suspect someone that has a, C, a GBS disease, they'll take samples of sterile body fluids. For example, sterile body fluids are blood and spinal fluid. Uh, doctors look to see if the GBS bacteria grow from those samples, which is a culture, and it can take a few days to get these results since the bacteria need time to grow. Doctors may also order a chest x-ray to help determine if somebody has GBS disease. Someone with GBS bacteria can cause urinary tract infections, UTIs. Or right, sometimes GBS bacteria can cause urinary tract infections. <laughs> uh, doctors can use a sample of urine to di diagnose a urinary tract infection. Okay, and doctors usually treat GBS disease with um, antibiotics, um, and they might include like penicillin or, or ampicillin. It all depends on your healthcare provider. Sometimes people with soft tissue and bone infections may need additional treatment, such as surgery. Treatment will also depend on the kind of infection that's being caused by the GBS bacteria. Patients should ask their or their child's um, doctor about specific treatment options for them. Okay. You know, with Kim, because mm -hmm. she had meningitis, they mm -hmm. were just treating it, trying to get the fever down. That was right. The, well, I'm sure they gave her something. Yeah, they must have. But I remember the the fever was terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, we would probably we should probably talk about the long term complications. Mm -hmm. Babies may have long term problems such as deafness, uh, not being able to hear. They may have developmental disabilities. Due, due to having GBS disease. Babies who had meningitis are especially at risk for having long-term problems. Care for sick babies has improved a lot in the United States, however. Two to three out of every 50 babies, so that's four to six percent, who develop GBS disease will die of the disease. Or complications therein? Yes. Okay. Uh, and it GBS bacteria may also cause miscarriages, stillbirths, and preterm deliveries, which I had many of those. Many of those yeah. before I actually, yeah. yeah so, so they may, maybe they should maybe have put I, you on an antibiotic. Maybe I did have it. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, the cause of these events is not known because mm -hmm. they're not looking in the right place. Well, and they're probably not testing. Yeah. Okay. Serious GBS infections such as bacteria, how do you say that? Bacteremia. Bacteremia. Sepsis and pneumonia can also be deadly for adults. On average, about one in 20 non-pregnant adults with serious GBS infections die. Risk of death is lower among younger adults and adults who do not have other medical conditions that may compromise them. Um, and vaccines are still in development. Um, Pfizer and Moderna are both working on vaccinations for this. And so it's a waiting game for the vaccine at this point. But on the um, onto the tips, hints, tricks, and such lightning round of the show. Like a game show. Right, sort of. Ten question lightning round. Lita, are you ready? Sure, I'm ready. All right. Why is a positive attitude important to you? Uh, because without one, I would be a lump on a log. Okay. Um, how would you Do keep... I get 10 points? Oh, of course you get 10 points. Thank you. Okay. And a gold star. <laughs> um, how do you keep that positive attitude during hard times such as COVID? I search the internet for jokes. Interesting um, answer. I'll give you 10 points for that as well. Okay. Um, what is your go-to for meditation? Uh, meditation. Um, Paul Simon songs. Okay. Great answer, 10 points, and a, a guitar pick. Um, <laughs> do you have any tricks for dealing with stress? Yes. Uh, That's not Oreos? No. 
um, I, I use a grounding technique okay. that my counselor suggested. Okay. Uh, I look for something in the room that I can see. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to focus on that. I'll try to smell something that I like, or I'll try to taste something. Oreos. Oh, you, you did say Oreos. I did okay. say Oreo. Uh, <laughs> I try to taste something that I like. I just try to get my mind off of whatever it is that's stressing. Okay, so you focus on your senses instead. Right. That's lovely. Ten points. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what do you always bring with you to your doctor's doctor's office? My body. Okay. Interesting. Interesting answer. Ten points. What do you use as a distraction technique during long waits in the doctor's office? My cell phone. I play Scrabble. I don't know Scrabble. What's it? Solitaire. 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 Okay. Um, how do you work through pain flares? Medical cannabis. Okie dokie. Um, give <laughs> us three of your favorite recreational pursuits. Fishing, mm -hmm. mushroom hunting, mm -hmm. camping. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you have to glamp now with your back. Yes. Okay. Yes. Not camping, glamping. Glamping. Okay. Great answer. Ten points. What animal best reflects your personality? A penguin. Okay. Do I just say why? I guess, I guess not. Okay, good, because I can't. I just picture a penguin and I picture me. Okay. Okay. I, I Sure. Go ahead. One of those short little penguins, not the big emperor, emperor penguins. Emperor penguins? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Do, the ones with the eyelashes or no? Um, okay. Good answer. <laughs> Ten points. Uh, what do you do to treat yourself? I'm dying to know the answer to this. Because you never treat yourself, do yes, you? Yes, I do. Do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I can't think of something. I immerse myself in the family tree. Oh, I was thinking more along the lines that you stalk Paul Simon. Oh, okay. For, first, row, first row tickets for Paul Simon. Okay, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. 100 points. Oh, we have you. a winner. Thank, thank you. Thank you for joining our show today. Oh, you're welcome. And you can take this bear or the koala. Oh, they're both bears. Oh, I'll koala take, bear. I'll take the elephant. Oh, okay. Yeah, we do have, we do have elephant. an elephant. Hey. That was because our dog was in here. But anyway... Um, how can our listeners learn more about you and this amazing <laughs> show? Well, you know, they can always go to uh, our website. Okay. PodcastDX at Yahoo. No, nope. our website is just PodcastDX.com. Right. And we always have a page for each episode that we post. So it'll have links with, uh, you know, different tips, hints, and advice for each episode. Great. Uh, we're on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. We're on Instagram. Okay. We're on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We're on Twitter and TikTok. Oh boy, even on TikTok, <laughs> which I still don't understand. And I found that bucket thing very disturbing. Okay. If you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on this podcast. Till next week. Thanks for listening. Hello.